and welcome back to Hold and Modify Its Q, host and operator of YouTube's most poorly produced Amiga and underproduced Amiga channel on YouTube. So today, with my apologize, apologize Q, I know the case is off and it's noisy. I don't know if you can hear that. I always try to cut the background noise out of these things. But yeah, 2,500 cases off. The case has got issues. I don't know. Maybe we got to go back to the forge and make a new one. But it's off for now. But that's not why we're here to look at that case. What we're here is to, uh, is to look at this. Yeah, this thing. This is the Alpha Data Optical Mouse. This came out in 1992, which some of you who are old might realize, well, that's quite a bit before the famous Microsoft IntelliMouse, which is arguably the first mainstream successful optical mouse, followed by, of course, everyone else making the same damn thing. But yes, at one point in time, back in 1992, the good old Alpha Data and Golden Image companies had licensed the twin LED, if you can look in there, you'll see the two LEDs, try not to blind you with them, the twin LED optical sensor uh, that Xerox had uh, originally pioneered and then proceeded to not really release to the public like they've done with so many things. Uh, it took about 10 years, I think. So Xerox had already had this technology uh, developed in-house for around 10 years and just didn't really do anything with it for public use. Or if they did, it was like you had to be a big manufacturer or a university and maybe you got, you know, a $40,000 mouse or something. Who knows? But the point is, in 1992, the licensing of that technology was finally unloaded and, and we got some. And these mice worked with PC, Atari, Amiga. There were specific versions, of course. The Atari and Amiga shared the same design and cord and whatnot. And, and uh, there's usually a switch in the bottom or they were auto-sensing if it was fancy. But these were uh, pretty slick. They offered the ability to have a mouse with no annoying ball. And as we all know, uh, balls can be very sticky and uh, gross and hairy and annoying. And uh, this gets rid of all of that problem. You know, it's totally clean and smooth. And you got this little custom mouse pad down here, you move them on. And then if you go up to here, well, what you're gonna see is my mouse moving only up and down because mine is broken. It's 35 years old, or, you know, so this is, this is what happens. I was actually shocked that it worked even this much. And if you look here, yeah, the right mouse button works. You can go up here, you can see that it definitely works. And left click works too. If I come down here, I can, See, left click does work. So it does work. And the really weird, neat thing about this is that it is really smooth. It really tracks nice. It's 300 DPI, all right? It uses those two LEDs to give you 300 DPI with this uh, groovy looking pad thing down here. I, mean, I don't think I can get you in here close enough. Maybe I can. If you look really close, I don't know if the 1080 YouTube stream is gonna grab this or not, but you can see the like dot pattern that's on there. So I was lost focus there, but that's what they're scanning. They're scanning the uh, a little dot array that's on there. So yeah, that's a pretty trick little little piece of gizmo there. And yeah, the company was Alpha Data, and I'll go ahead and give you guys a better look at the bottom. So if you wanna get a little closer look at the model number and thing, it's just mouse, very advanced there, the naming, made in Taiwan. And again, it was Alpha Data and Golden Image that made these. So these are technically, I guess, really the first gen optical mouse. Uh, they weren't widely available, but they did have an advertising campaign. They were, uh, they would show in computer magazines, um, Amiga and Atari and, and Windows and PC-based magazines. And you could go into most, you know, small ma pa stores, maybe even a Radio Shack. I don't remember if that was true or not, but I was, you know, Amiga guy, so I didn't really go into Radio Shack too often for computer stuff. But all the Amiga stores that I went to in my town in Michigan, uh, they all had these on the shelf. This was a big deal because it was like, man, you can get optical mice now. The ball, the the, the air of the ball is over, and the, the the price was not ridiculous. Like, I mean, these were like thirty six dollars, I think, back in the day. In some places, um, that might have been much later. I I really do think the original price was higher than that. I thought it was like eighty dollars originally when they came out. Like the very there was a really really early version of this. It might have been before ninety two. It, was, it had three buttons. This is a three-button mouse, by the way. I have to get in here. So, yeah, it is a three-button mouse, which is pretty slick. That was great for the Amiga back then, too. But you notice how it has a more updated, modern design? There was a much more boxier, chunkier three-button one. I think that was the one that was closer to 80 bucks. And then this 
you know, some time had come, you know, technology had evolved even back as, you know, as young as 92, and the price had come way down. So if you look online, you do some Googling, you'll find uh, these going for like $30 in funny money, Europe dollars, um, I guess 30, 30 pounds, uh, which today, well, I mean, today that translates to around 36 bucks, right? Or is it a wash now? I forget. Where's the Euro wash? I don't know things about money, folks. I'm not a not really a good money person. Whatever that translates to inflation today, by the way, the money I'm quoting you is the original sales prices. Yeah, obviously that's a little more money today for a, an optical mouse. But these were the first generation. The second generation optical mice used the new uh, chip in board and the new uh, LED array that HP pioneered. So HP kind of reinvented the optical mouse. Xerox didn't really seem to care. Uh, because, you know, by, I don't know, Xerox, Xerox let a lot of things get out of the, away from their company and let other companies use and do, not seem to care. Uh, but HP basically reinvented the technology, repackaged it into a new chip. It was much better, much more improved, didn't require a special mouse pad. And, of course, it's the optical technology that, you know, we find in all modern mice to this very day. So, uh, but, the, you know, to be fair to the history of computing, if we're all keeping track of this, all these modern mice, these optical mice we use, these are second gen, or Mark IIs, if you want to call it that. This is not the original optical tech, but it is the one that was the most successful and that everyone on the planet uses now. These were Gen 1s, and while they were a fun, neat distraction, and honestly, when they did work, as I said, they were really smooth, and they operated really, really smoothly. Um, but obviously, after all this time, this one has died. And I do hope that I can get this fixed, because I do want to uh, use it. And because I'd like to do, I know this is going to sound kind of weird and, and nerdy, but kind of like a mouse off, like maybe have two Amigas side by side with the mouse and record it and just see how they track and see who is smoother than who. And I don't know, just weird mouse ball versus mouse. White? I, I don't even know how to, what, what I would title that video. Anyway, uh, maybe I'll send this to Dr. Chris, or maybe I'll have someone in the comments say, oh, this is a common thing you need to do. You got to swap the dingus with the flabagus. Okay, cool. I'll do that. But for now, I think I'm done with this video. Thanks for watching.